This is Wardlow from AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. What's up, everybody? Shout out to the new patrons, Kumar Jenkins, Nessa G, and Sausage with the upgrade on Patreon. Uh, over 30 hours of bonus content a month. Can't hear on YouTube. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Brett the Hitman Hart with a great podcast. I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Um, I'm yet to watch the Goldberg one completely, so I haven't seen that one incomplete. But I would say so far, to me, I think that this was one of my one of my favorite podcasts. A lot of um, you know adoration, admiration is the word uh, for for Bret Hart from Stone Cold. I think Stone Cold really you know knows Bret Hart pretty well. Um, I think it I think it also helps that Stone Cold was a huge Bret Hart fan. Obviously, uh, when he was a wrestler, you know, he was just behind Bret Hart as far as uh, next up, um, you know, on the on the as far as uh, being a veteran, being a legend, that type of deal. He's Bret, you know, Stone Cold was kind of the next guy right after Bret Hart, and so he acknowledges that he really puts Bret Hart over. Bret Hart loves adulation, uh, adulation. Jesus, I can't get these words are all mixed up for me right now. <laughs> Bret Hart loves it when you talk good about him, basically. He wants respect. He, he to, I, I give him that respect. I think he earns that respect. I don't always agree with Bret Hart's all of his opinions on wrestling, but I mean Bret Hart is, I, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And the reason is, and as a kid, I tended to always choose the other guy a lot of times over Hart. But I was a full Bret Hart fan from about um, probably about the time of WrestleMania eight to WrestleMania um, WrestleMania eleven. I was. Bret Hart was my probably my number two guy behind Shawn Michaels, and I always chose Shawn Michaels, unfortunately for Hart, over everything because I was a big Shawn Michaels fan before I really was a Bret Hart fan, and that's why. But the thing about it is when you look back on epic matches, and I'm going to do a podcast on this going back and looking back on my favorite matches of all time, you know, part one and then get into part twos and things like that. You know, some of my favorite matches of all time involve Bret Hart. It's kind of crazy. Even though I was more of a Stone Cold guy and a Shawn Michaels guy at many times, Bret Hart was phenomenal. People don't, I, I think sometimes really don't give him credit as far as his promos too. So they talked about a lot of that stuff in this podcast, and it's really good. I give this podcast a thumbs up. I thought it was really cool. Bret Hart is also known for kind of burying people and being very, I think he's honest. I think he, I, what I like, one of the things I like about Bret Hart is, he really is honest. He doesn't have any of that bullshit. He doesn't have any of that BS corporate crap of, you know, like anything. He just kind of goes in. He doesn't care if the guy's alive, deceased, in the hospital at the moment. Whatever the case is, Bret Hart says what he thinks about you. And uh, I knew they were going to get into that because at some point, uh, you know, Bret Hart talked about Vader and he's like, yeah, and you know, I didn't want to face Vader because, uh, you know, he's fucking potato me and all this other stuff. And he was about to go in to Vader and how Vader was awful in the ring to work with and things like that. And Steve Austin, like, interrupts that, you know, uh, Stone Cold interrupts it. And it was in the middle of a point that Bret was making when he was going to finish answering a longer question that, you know, Stone Cold had previously asked. And Steve Austin actually... um he he just changes course completely and interrupts Bret Hart. He goes, but hey, yeah, Vader's no longer with us. And But anyway, so tell me about this. Like, And he kind of just interrupts him. And I kind of wanted to hear the rest of what Bret Hart was going to say. So if you're looking for a lot of bashing and sort of, you know, shooting on other guys, um, this is not that podcast for you. This is more of a reminiscing about what Stone Cold and Bret Hart did and you know, touching a little bit on Bret Hart's legacy. So I thought this was a really good um, podcast with Stone Cold and Bret. But it felt more like the Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart story and less of the Bret Hart story. And that's only because, I don't know, I guess, you know, Stone Cold was really corralling Bret Hart into doing that sort of format instead of a sort of a, you know, a shoot on everything. And which is weird. You would think it would be the other way, but it, but Bret Hart does sneak in the burial of Goldberg at the end of this. And coincidentally, and well, not coincidentally, but funny enough, today, the number one thing that people are talking about is Bret Hart and his comments on Goldberg just being unsafe and terrible. You know, and Stone Cold really couldn't stop it because Bret Hart went into it at the end of getting hurt and stuff like that and then went into like, you know, I told Goldberg, the one thing I told Goldberg is don't hurt me. Just don't hurt me. When we go out there, just whatever you do, don't hurt me. You know, and the funny thing is, you know, he, he hurts him. 
and Brett knew it. Brett was worried about it, and Goldberg did it. And, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of pride with Goldberg. I think the guy's very prideful. If I was Goldberg, I would be physically ill that I took out a legend in the business. I think that I feel like I've never really heard Goldberg explain this, but I feel like Goldberg doesn't have enough remorse for what he did. And I feel like Bret Hart maybe um, can't let it go either. So, like, the two of them are kind of on opposite ends of the polar spectrum. I think Goldberg really needs to face Bret Hart off in an interview and apologize for it and say, listen, I wasn't the best wrestler. And it's a shame that, you know, I, I, I wasn't always the best out there. And one of my mistakes took out one of the best. And it's something that, uh, you know, is I get asked about all the time and I feel bad about it every day. And it's uh, I feel I feel bad. And if I don't have your forgiveness about it, you know, I don't I can't ever move on in my life. Um, so I would like if we could do that. And I think Bret Hart would uh, would meet him halfway there, and I think they could forgive each other. Um, but I think Goldberg's too prideful, and I think he thinks more like, hey, man, whatever, f- fuck you. Like, things happen, and what do you want? And I think Bret Hart's more like, you know, I warned you, I asked you, I watched you, heard everybody else. But, um, you know, I don't know. The guys really should come together on that. But um, <laughs> the podcast was good. If you didn't hear it, the video podcast, whatever you want to call it, on uh, the WWE Network, it was definitely good, but it was uh, it could have been couldn't have been could have been juicier, put it that way. But it was nice to see these two guys. And I remember WrestleMania 13. I was 13 years old, and um, I couldn't wait to see that match. But I was a little bit leery of it because the last time I had seen a submission match was Bret Hart and Bob Backlund. And I'd probably say that it was Bret Hart's wor- one of Bret Hart's worst matches ever of all time, if he ever had one. If he ever had one, that was it. You know, I can't remember too many matches of Bret Hart's where you're like, wow, that sucked. You know, but that one was not very good. And it, it, was, it was the match because what they did was they made it so literal. Bob Backlund and Bret Hart, it was like every five seconds, Roddy Piper would be like, are you want to submit? You want to submit? And it was very obvious. Like, look, I am now trying to submit him again. Look, I am now trying to submit him again. And Bret Hart and Stone Cold actually talk about that for a second in this podcast. And then they explain at WrestleMania 13 that they wanted it to be more like a, like a schoolyard brawl. And that's exactly what we got. Kind of like backyard wrestling, schoolyard brawl. But if you did it with two guys who are amazing in the business brilliant wrestling minds like Steve Austin and Bret Hart instead of just a couple of guys in their backyard. That's what you got. And that's why their their match was so much more successful than Roddy than um sorry, Roddy Piper was the official, but um than Bob Backlund and Bret Hart at WrestleMania eleven. WrestleMania eleven was one of the worst WrestleManias of all time anyway. Although the ring sounded amazing. You go back to WrestleMania eleven, I don't know what it is, but the ring sounded friggin' awesome. A little too metally sound, metallic sounding when they hit the map, but you know it's just the ring sounded pretty cool. I don't know why that comes to my mind, but it does. But uh, yeah, so anyway, there are th- some things in this podcast that I really enjoyed, and I just remember that WrestleMania 13 match being like, man, that is the match of the year. That is one of the best matches I've ever seen, and um, that's what I thought at 13 years old. And I know that it, you're thinking to yourself. At 13 years old, you're thinking that's one of the best matches you've ever seen? How many matches have you seen at 13 years old? But I've been watching wrestling since I'd been five. I watched as much wrestling as I could. Like, I think it's so important and crazy to bring this up that I began watching wrestling in 1988. Around that time, I was about four or five years old. And at that time, I became obsessed at that time. My mom was buying me the VHSs and I was renting them. And then by 1990, I mean 1990 and 1992, those two years, I dude, I was f- into so much wrestling, it was insane. I was getting tapes uh, traded or tape traded from people um, at the video store who were into wrestling that had tapes of like NWA and things like that. And so, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it, to me, by, by the time it was WrestleMania 10, I was like, I had known everything about the WWF. I'd watched everything and known everything, and I was 10 years old. And I was like, man, wrestling is so different now. WrestleMania 10, no more Hulk Hogan, and everything's so different. This is so weird. And the ladder match, and, and just all these things and memories. Um, so by WrestleMania 10, 
I, I felt like a lot of guys were new, you know, like Bret Hart, you know, not Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, but, you know, Razor Ramon felt new to me. I was still like, oh, this is such a new guy, you know, where a lot of people's memories started with Razor Ramon and Bret Hart and Shawn and those guys. But mine started with, you know, Macho Man and Hulk Hogan and even the Andre the Giant stuff with Hogan and all that type of stuff. So, you know, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, I, I feel like I've been watching wrestling forever. And, um, I'm worried about these empty arena shows. But anyway, I thought the podcast was good. Go give it a listen. Let me know. And I'm going to have a podcast coming to Patreon soon talking about everything that Tony Khan talked about in his AEW podcast. I want to give a special shout out to the $25 producers of uh, the show. Without you guys, um, you know, I couldn't do this show. So uh, thank you guys for being great producers. I can't do this without producers and without all the patrons. So thank you to the new patrons who came back. Most of these are, are returning patrons. Uh, Nessa, Sausage, and Kumar, we've had you before, but they are back on Patreon. Welcome to you guys. Thanks for joining. And thank you to the $25 producers, people that are doing $25 a month or higher. Um, huge impact on the show. So thank you, uh, ADTR, Ocnolia, Wandy, Brian Harper, CJ Bradley, Cole Brew Crew, Dan Cora, Daniel Cater, Drew Bar 100, Dwayne Crenshaw, Frog Kid, Gary Metzler, Nikki J, Patty McGill, um, Patty McGill, Shell Bryan, Shy God, Sith Negan, SOCOM Castle, Talk to Me Nice, The Bear 1322, Z the Reaper, Gerald Armstrong, J, Joe Compton, John Steller, Constipated Rock, John Zippe, Joseph Lightsey, June Bug, Kalel Bama, Star Scream, Matt Ross, Meyer, Mikey Guaz from Brooklyn, and Mike Torian. Thank you all for being producers and helping me out, especially Jesus, especially during the, the hard time we're in right now. We all could be getting bailed out soon, though, it looks like, at least here in the U.S. Thanks for the support, and a special thanks to all the people that watch around the world, outside the United States, Canada, and then especially the U.K., people who stay up late or wake up early to hear the shows. Um, thank you all for that, and the people in Australia who, in the middle of the day, tune in. At different times. Thank you all. Here's some other uh, videos you might have missed. Check them out. Hit that sub button. Leave some comments below with what you thought about the uh, podcast. And I may respond to them in a video.